Happy holidays to everyone and welcome to our Home for the Holidays special edition of our Dine Around Downtown Cooking at Home series. Thank you for joining us. We hope you're all staying safe, healthy and warm out there and enjoying the snow if you can. <laughs> uh, my name is Ron Dijon and I am the event manager for the Downtown Alliance. Uh, now, for those of you who don't know, we are a business improvement district uh, in Lower Manhattan. And what we do is we help to make downtown a cleaner, safer, and more vibrant place to work, live, and visit. Uh, and hopefully soon uh, you guys will get to come downtown and see all the sites. Um, this includes providing support to local businesses, especially during times like these. Uh, this series is part of our continuing effort to provide support in this case to local restaurants that have been impacted by COVID-19. Uh, and you can today help to uh, donate and support Holy Apostles Soup Kitchen, which is the food security charity chosen by Seymour's. Every contribution is greatly appreciated, whether it's $50, $5, $500, each gift can help make a difference. This soup kitchen provides a hot, well-balanced meal daily to over 1,000 people from all over New York City. Uh, you will find a link to that in the chat box, which I will share with you right now. There you go. So uh, check them out when you get a chance and please donate what you can. Um, just a few things before we begin. Uh, we want to let you know that this cooking demo is being recorded and a link to the video will be sent to you uh, and everyone who signed up for this event at some point tomorrow via email. Uh, when it comes to Q&A, if you guys have any questions, we welcome any questions for the chef uh, during the demo. Uh, if you have any, please submit them through the Q&A feature, which is located if you're using a desktop or laptop. Uh, it's usually at the bottom of the screen. For those of you who are using an iPad, tablet, or phone, uh, you can tap once on your screen and it should appear on the top right corner. For some of you who have a different phone, it might be at the bottom, but it's either on the right or the bottom, check it out. Um, as for the chat box, that is where we will continue to share helpful links, websites, and other detailed information throughout the program. And one of the uh, links I will share with you now is for our poster plate contest. There you go. Uh, and our poster plate contest is a chance for you guys who are cooking along at home and uh, maybe even planning to try the recipes this weekend. Uh, if you post your plate on Instagram, you can enter to win 30 minute private virtual cooking class with tonight's guest chef by simply hashtagging dine around at home. Uh, and be sure to, of course, tag the restaurant and the chef as well. Uh, check out the details via the link that I just shared in the chat uh, and share your photos because we'd love to see them and all the masterpieces you guys are creating. All right, let's get this holiday episode hopping, okay? So it, it is my pleasure to introduce your host today, uh, award-winning chef, author, and here to bring in the cheer, please welcome Rocco Despierdo. Thanks again, guys, for joining us. We've hosted some wonderful chefs and restaurants in the downtown area. Today is no exception. Today, we're going to be joined by Chef Rob Eggleston from uh, Seymour's, one of my favorite restaurants in downtown New York, not only because it's in my backyard, but because uh, they, the food is amazing. But in addition to having amazing food and service and a wonderful environment uh, and, and a wonderful location, they practice something that a lot of us talk about, uh, but never really get to do in real life, uh, sustainability. So the the company of uh, Seymour's was um, founded on the mission or with the mission to only serve and and uh, pr provide seafood that was sustainable. Now, uh, for those of you who are not chefs, that narrows down your choices quite a, a bit and opens up some areas as well. And I'll, I'll let Chef uh, Eggleston tell us more about it when he joins us, but um, it definitely makes things a uh, it makes a, a difficult business even more difficult because uh, now uh, when you add sustainability to the mix, you're, um, you're having to seek out specific uh, farmers, you're having to look for uh, wild caught fish that isn't available year round, so the menu has to change very frequently. And, uh, and they've been doing this since 2016, I believe, when they, when they found it, in any case, Rob uh, joined them in 2017 and quickly rose to the ranks of executive chef. He's been tearing it up ever since. 
please give uh, Rob, Chef Rob Eggleston, a warm Downtown Alliance welcome as he joins us. Rob, are you there? I am. How's it going, nice Rocco? Nice to see you. Looking good, my friend. Thank Looking you. Good. Thank How are you, you feeling? Welcome. Welcome to Seymour's. Thank you. Thank you for having us. So tell uh, us a little feeling... bit about uh, what it's like to run a, a kitchen that's based on sustainability. We all talk about it, but none of us get to live it every day. You do. Tell us about it. I do. Um, and I, as you said, I, I joined Seymour's in 2017 uh, and it was built on on sustainable seafood that was that was uh, most importantly local uh, as possible. And from there, we've we've grown as the years have gone by. Fishing has changed. Um, a lot of fish uh, all across the world is is farmed and that is farmed sustainably. Um, so we're super proud here at Seymour's to, um, without a doubt, serve you some of the most sustainable seafood in all of New York City. Um, we've, we've gotten some recognition for that from the James Beard Smart Catch program. So we are, uh, each of our restaurants is a leader in that. And I'm very proud uh, to say that and uh, have that stamp of approval. Yeah, on you're our, one of on the very few that lives it, breathes it, eats it, yeah. so to speak. Um, it, it does make it a little more difficult as a chef planning menus, yeah. uh, I believe. Tell us a little bit about what the challenges are with uh, running a restaurant that's also um, mission-based, in, in this case, sustainability. Yeah, um, so, you know, uh, in sustainable seafood, um, the, there are three things that we really focus on and it's what's good for the environment, uh, what is socially responsible in fishing and what is economically going to help these and, and um, help these fishermen, you know, continue to, to, to fish the sustainable way, uh, which in a nutshell is, is, you know, not overfishing certain, you know, any type of fish. So those are high standards, yeah. high standards. Yeah. indeed. Yeah. And, you know, when, when we can serve fish that we know is responsibly caught, it's a win-win for not only our guests and us and our fishmonger, but for the fisherman who is catching that. Um, so, yeah. So um, when we think about all the fish that are that is available right now, hundreds of, of species come to mind. Uh, if you're yeah. making a menu for December, January, February, uh, right now and, and limiting it only to the, the fish that check all three of those boxes, what are we left with? So we're, we're actually left with a lot. Um, and it's knowing what exactly those, those choices are. And um, it really comes down to knowing where your fish is from. Um, and there, other than, you know, we know exactly what is coming in, where it's coming from. Um, and, you know, I've, I've got scallops, I've got hake, I've got pollock, I've got um, Yum. shrimp lobster i've i've got bluefish um a, a lot of fish that is sustainable um you know we it's Blue not going to be available the most underrated fish in the atlantic ocean probably one of the most delicious fish and the easiest to prepare yeah. and so underrated yeah um you know it's the key thing about sustainability is you know that not all fish is going to be available at all times and right. our our guests and uh, myself uh, are very flexible in what is available from our fishmonger, who is, uh, I'm, I'm proud to say, Greenpoint Fish and Lobster uh, that's based out of here uh, in Brooklyn. So we work very close together, uh, Vinnie Milburn uh, and I do, um, that, that we, so we can keep serving and providing and, and uh, sustainable seafood. And for you guys who are watching, when, when he says he works very closely together, he means he's talking to his partner at Greenpoint on a daily basis, often 15, 20 times a day. They're texting. Yeah. They're probably having drinks and dinner every once in a while. And they're, and they're having long discussions about what the, what the seafood market looks like and you know, building yeah. a relationship so that uh, they know they can rely on each other uh, as, we, as we move through you know, every day at work and in business. Um, and these are the relationships that really distinguish chefs from other chefs. The relationships with the people yeah. who provide you with your ingredients is probably the most important asset a great chef will have. And if you, if you look at all the great chefs out there, one thing, it will, there's one common thread. They've been working with the same farmers and purveyors and providers of seafood and meats 
for 20, 30 years. So uh, that's that's what Chef Eggleston is trying to accomplish with Greenpoint. And uh, I've worked with Greenpoint as well. They're fantastic. Um, what are you going to yeah. make for us today, Chef? Looks like some, so, there's some salmon on your cutting board. Always yes, a good there is. Uh, there's a beautiful uh, Norwegian salmon that we have uh, that we'll be roasting, um, as well as you know, our, uh, it's, I'm showing you how to, to make our holiday salmon meal kit, um, which we yes, have. Those, those are available online right now, right? The yeah, they are. Kit. Yeah, they are through Seymours.com. You can also order them nationwide through Gold Belly uh, right. or through Baldor uh, if you're in the uh, New York City metro area. And these are kits so, for four people, right? Yeah, they, they're for poor people, which is, you know, perfect for these holidays this year. Um, I've got some roasted veggies with sumac and honey. Uh, we're going to do a cauliflower mash. We're going to do a dill yogurt sauce and a wild rice and mushroom. And all that's in the kit, enough for four it, people? And it I is, believe it was yeah. in the 100, 100 something range? Yes, uh, running uh, at 160. That's a great deal, guys. Great deal. Yeah. FYI. Yeah. Why don't you show us how it's done? Where do we yeah, start? Yeah, absolutely. So we're gonna start with, um, I've got this beautiful salmon right here. This is, uh, I've patted it dry, but before we get started on that, uh, I'm gonna make the dill yogurt sauce. So I've already portioned out the two cups of uh, yogurt, that's Greek yogurt. Um, and we're gonna go with the dill. So I wanna set some of this aside uh, because I wanna use it to garnish uh, the, the salmon after it's roasted, it just makes it look nice. I like green, um, fresh herbs on, on Chef, everything. Chef, is that the uh, Greek yogurt that is unsweetened? Uh, yes. Important, right? Big difference, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, cool. huge. Um, so I'm just, I've rinsed this dill and we're gonna start. For those of you who uh, haven't had Dill recently, it's a it has a mild anise flavor. Uh, one of my favorite herbs. I think it should go in almost every dish on the planet. It never it never does any harm. No. So all right, I've got my dill enough for what we're using. All right, nice big bunch. So I'm gonna bunch that together, and you want to mince this a little bit just in smaller pieces. You don't want to- Yeah, there's no need to go crazy strings. with gel. You don't have to yeah. You don't have to smash it into smithereens. It, 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 no, no, it no. sort of minces itself by uh, yeah. virtue of how it's shaped. So we're adding that to our- By yogurt. the way, serious camera work, Gio. Nice camera work. <laughs> yeah, I've got one of the best <laughs> behind the camera. DPs, one of the best DPs on the planet. <laughs> Right, and then from there, I've got a lemon, a bit of acid, and I'm gonna zest uh, one lemon and juice as well. Goes in the dill yogurt sauce. So two cups of yogurt, uh, about a quarter cup of dill, juice and zest of one lemon. Yep. Helps to have that really uh, nifty zester, by the way, if you don't own a <laughs> microplane, it's time to get one. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I remember when it was just a luxury uh, and, and now it's an absolute must. Yeah, I use my microplane at home, mostly to grade Parmesan cheese on top of pasta, uh, but it helps zesting any citrus as well. So since the yogurt is unsweetened, it's gonna have a nice uh, level of acidity already. Probably something yeah. you wanna taste as you're adding lemon juice oh, to yeah. it to make sure it doesn't become yeah. too acidic. Yeah. So what we're gonna do from there, uh, I've got some cayenne that I'm gonna nice. add in. Yeah. Turn up the like, heat. Yeah, I, I love heat. I love spice. So, you know, a lot of people don't. If you wanna just add as you will. That's totally okay. So we're mixing all that together. And look and how this you can make that a comes together, right? Yeah. And it's so thick and creamy already. Yeah. Uh, if you're getting it, so the, the thing about Greek yogurt, there's some that are thick uh, and you know, that 
if you need to add a little bit of milk, about a quarter cup, that's totally okay. It'll thin it out and make it a little bit more creamier, depending on which brand you're getting. So, all right, just needs a little bit of salt. Hold on, just texting the DOH to let them know. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Listen, guys, if you go into a kitchen and you see chefs tasting their food a lot, don't be revolted by it. You should be enthusiastic. You should know that that should be a signal to you that they really care about their food. They're, they're concerned about yeah. whether the food tastes good or not. That's what real chefs do. We're tasting our food all the time. All right, and just adding a little bit of olive oil. All right, so there you got it. Your deli yogurt Beautiful. sauce. So Amazing. you can make this ahead of time. Um, uh, you know, a couple of days ahead to if the way will separate on the uh, Greek yogurt. So just give it a stir. Um, you know, right before you serve it. Um, and that, right. that'll so, last a few days, right, Jeff? Yeah, absolutely. Easily. Yeah. Cool. Absolutely. Uh, you know, you the the dill might turn, so you know you want to use it you know, in the next few days. All right, so I've got these beautiful heads of cauliflower. Uh, and what I love making, and it's, and we actually serve it at the restaurant on our signature plate, it's a real deal, uh, which is three sides. You get to choose your fish, choose a sauce, and it all comes with a lemon. So it's uh, a really fresh, it's one of our most popular dishes, and it's been on the menu since day one. Uh, on that, I have cauliflower mash, which is a fan favorite. Uh, so I thought I'd show you all how to make that today. Um, so I've got these pretty, you know, stemmy um, and leafy cauliflower heads. So I'm just going to take a little bit off. Um, and you don't have to remo remove everything, but just a little bit. Yeah, actually, all of the stems and the leaves will become tender also if you cook it in yeah. boiling water. So you can, you can yeah. eat that. I know for some people that's a huge thing, yeah. but it's really not. Yeah, so I'm just cleaning it up a little bit. Um, and we've got, you know, I like to leave some of the leaves on there, some of the stem. I like to not have so much waste. That's really beautiful cauliflower. What farm do you work with for uh, uh, your produce? Uh, so I, I work with, uh, Fresco, they they are at the market in Hunts Point every day. So very cool. Um, yeah. All right. So I've got those. I've cut them in half, um, and we're gonna. These are ready to drop into boiling water. Um, now is that water salted and rolling boil? Yeah. Yeah. So I. I you definitely want to salt the water. Um, cauliflower needs a little bit of seasoning. Um, so I like to, to season it pretty heavily, a uh, little bit of olive oil. All right. So before we drop that into the water, I want to prep some of these other veggies, some of these other beautiful veggies. All right. I've got a carrot here, one large carrot that I've peeled already. Um, and this is for the sumac roasted veggies with honey. Okay. Um, I want to just make some medallions and with this recipe, um, because the Brussels sprouts and, uh, delicata squash are a little bit thicker and take a little bit longer to cook. I want to cut my carrots, uh, about the same, a little thicker so they don't cook too fast and it all cooks evenly and roasts evenly. So, yeah. Yeah, my Brussels, I'm just gonna clean those up. Lots of, uh, so a big mix of vegetables, got some cruciferous in there, some squash. The delicata oh, yeah. squash is something that's uh, ubiquitous now, was not a few years ago. People are really starting to warm up to it. Has a sweet oh, yeah. nutty flavor like most squash cooks quickly. I know it looks like a gourd and you probably think of a gourd as a decorative item, but this is indeed edible with the skin and all, by yeah. the way. Oh yeah. yeah. The skin's the most beautiful part about it. So um, we're just cutting those Brussels in half. 
the thing with Brussels sprouts is um, a lot of people think they require a lot of prep and you have to tear off lots of leaves and you really don't have to do any of that. Those leaves are just as delicious as the, as yeah, the ones inside. I've, yeah. I love throwing those leaves in there. So they, you know, they'll char up and get a little crispy, which is awesome. So chef, you're, you're obviously right. doing this in, in, in a specific order so that uh, it all comes out cooked at the same time, I imagine. It's the big question. It's always the question you get from from people watching cooking demos. How do I how do I yeah. time it so it's all coming out, you know, cooked yeah. at the same time? So we yeah, we, yeah. we saw that you made a sauce first, and you moved to your veggies. You're doing your salmon last, which might be counterintuitive to some people, but I'm sure you have your your reasons. Yeah, yeah. The salmon you don't want to overcook, so I'm saving that for last because um, it takes and... the least amount of time to cook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The longest recipe that I have on here um, is the wild rice. It's definitely the most involved. Um, and I've already got my rice cooking over there, as well as my sauteed veggies and butternut squash. So you will watch um, putting that one together. But look at that. Look at that beautiful delicata squash. And they come in all shapes and sizes. So beautiful. I, lo I love the, the yeah. fact that you can eat the skin. Uh, yeah. and, and you don't have to peel it. A lot of people think you need to, but you don't. Hey, chef, there's a couple of questions. Yeah. You mind if I, mind if I throw this in? Okay, great. Cool, cool, yeah. cool, cool, cool. When you're cooking fish professionally, ooh, uh, do you check mm. the temperature of the fish with a thermometer or you just go by your other senses like touch, sight, or flaking a piece off? Um, so I don't use a thermometer uh, through a lot of trial and error though, uh, and overcooking a fish, uh, you know, my, myself and my line cooks know how to uh, cook fish. When you have a thicker piece of fish, though, uh, it is good to um, have, I, I have a cake tester. So on those fish that have, you know, thicker flakes, like a hake or a cod, um, it is, you know, it would be helpful for you to um, just put in a cake, cake tester and if there's any resistance uh, or, you know, if you have to force the cake tester to go through the fish, that typically means that it's not done cooking yet. So that is a little piece of advice, but no, I don't tempt my fish. Yeah, most cooks have mm -hmm. uh, a Sharpie and a cake tester in their sleeve pocket at all times yeah. and, maybe, and maybe a spoon for tasting. Uh, the cake tester yeah. is indispensable. You could also use yeah. it as a thermometer, if you if you touch your face or your the back of your hand yeah. with it, you can compare it to your body temp, and that'll give yeah. you some information as well. Chef, here's another one. Have read that wild fish, particularly salmon, is vastly more healthy than farmed fish. Can you please comment on if this is correct or why or why not? Does it matter if the fish is sustainable or not? Well, I know so, where you stand uh, on that, but let's let's tell the people yeah. how, how we should do it. Yeah. So. Um, I actually, over the past year and a half, have worked very closely. Another fish that we bring in to the restaurant is a farmed and sustainable uh, steelhead trout. And that is healthier for you in omega-3 fatty acids uh, than, a, than some wild salmon, um, you know, that are typically caught in, in Alaska. Uh, and the reason for that is, uh, what they are fed so it's all in in their feed um which you know there there are a lot of places and if it you know sustainably farmed salmon these farms uh that include algae in their feed that um you know things that are good for the environment you know that they wouldn't typically get out um in the wild so that increases their omega-3 fatty acids it's better for you um so, so the answer is that they're both healthy. They both can be healthy. I think yeah. the, the thing yeah. that you want to tell us is you got to, you just got to know which farm and what they're feeding their fish, which is why you go through such extensive research to, to yeah. find out these things. Yeah. Could right, you share so, the name of the farm that you use for your Norwegian salmon? Yeah. So that is uh, Cravoy Farms. Uh, and that is, you know, that's a farm. I, I got the chance to last year uh, meet the uh, 
farmer and uh, he at an event. And so he, um, you know, he's, he's got his product all over, um, you know, the United States. It's readily available and you can find it at most Whole Foods, uh, which is really awesome. Um, and, and, and the so. truth of it is, uh, or the sad truth in some cases is that we're going to be relying on farm raised fish in the future uh, as yeah. we continue to overfish and deplete the oceans and deplete our resources. Uh, you know, everything is, everything is connected as we uh, deplete yeah. the resources in our environment and uh, do nothing in the face of climate change. Uh, things, yeah. things change in the ocean as well. So farm fish yeah. is probably going to be the, uh, the biggest supplier of fresh fish in the future. So yeah. we have we we uh, put the link to to Carvoy Arctic in the chat box. You can check it out yourself, and maybe maybe uh, if you've already bought from Seymour's, you can see if you can buy it direct from the from the farm. Okay, looks like all the veggies got seasoned with sumac and olive oil, and they're they're on yes. a sheet pan now. Yep, single single layer on a sheet pan Have to put my Brussels down, flat side down, get a nice char. Chef, there's a question about the uh, hard triangular section inside each Brussels sprout. Doesn't that remain a bit tough to chew if left in? Go for it. Um, so it, it depends on how you uh, how you prepare it or cook it. Um, I, you know, they're I'm, I'm just roasting these start to finish on the Brussels, uh, and that will uh, not be so toothsome. You know, and a lot of times uh and i love blanching brussels and then sauteing them on the stove top so if you under blanch them yes they're they're gonna be uh a little bit hard to chew uh on that root yeah so the answer uh, but, is cook it till they're done right yeah cook yeah, it till they're so tender I, yes so these are gonna go in the oven all right and those are gonna roast chef there's a question about sumac what is it what, what could you use if you can't get yourself some sumac yeah, maybe preserved so, lemon. Yeah, exactly. Sumac's got a very kind of lemony, citrus, acidic taste to it, uh, which is why I like it on vegetables. Um, and it's a Mediterranean spice. It is a little difficult to find. Uh, mostly you can find it at a specialty uh, spice store, food store. Um, but if you don't have it, I could, I would do or suggest a little bit of lemon zest. Uh, again, zesting lemon, uh, especially over vegetables, which is awesome to to take that place and then just increase the uh, the salt and the pepper yeah sumac is a tart flavor so other tart yeah. flavors that make your mouth pucker would work uh chef yeah. there, there's a question about a dairy-free alternative uh for the yogurt ah yes so um there are a lot of good dairy free um alternatives to greek yogurt uh i i like greek yogurt because it's the high in probiotics uh but there are some coconut and oat based yogurts that are yeah. totally totally cool to sub out yeah and using oat milk uh to to thin it out as so well. delicious is a good brand of coconut yogurt uh they're organic yeah. and and uh have used used great practices and uh yeah. there's a there's a, a monty's uh cream cheese out there that would work well if you if it diluted it a little bit with with um coconut milk or cashew milk it's got pr that, that probiotic flavor they make they make a yeah. cream cheese out of cashew um chef some questions about salmon bellies i used to yes. purchase, purchase them at the farmer's market in the bay area do you serve where can i get how can i love up some salmon bellies <laughs> Salmon bellies. Uh, get some whole fresh salmon. Uh, yeah, break I guess. them down. Break <laughs> them down yourself. The fish, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the funny yeah. thing is, there's probably some restaurants that are routinely throwing away skin with a lot of salmon still attached to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, we like to, and what I use um, in the restaurant um, with the fish that we're bringing in, but also from our fishmonger Greenpoint, I, I make a fish stock, which is what I use and uh, to, to thin out and make our clam, New England clam chowder. So it, again, it utilizes the whole parts of the fish, which is another keystone to Seymour's tier and sustainability and, and you know, reducing our impact on seafood waste. Um, you know, if you get a whole fish 
and only want certain parts of it, you can find and be creative in, in other ways uh, to utilize the rest of the fish. Very cool. That also answers another question uh, about using scraps in a stock. Jacqueline Brady Selma yes. asked the question. So Jacqueline, the answer is yes, definitely use the scraps in a stock. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. How do we uh, how do we move forward now? All right, so I'm gonna get this salmon in the oven. Uh, we're gonna roast that. First, I, I want to, this is skin on, um, and you can request your butcher to take it skin off. I know, you know, fish should not be intimidating. One, the butcher, two, to, to cook. Um, I've got my fish tweezers here. I am, so t salmon typically has a lot of fin bones. And if you're getting your seafood uh, from a fishmonger, you know, it's, it's for the most part gonna be pin boned, but it's always good to check. And how you check is you run your, your finger against the grain um, along kind of that middle right here. And sometimes there's some along the belly side. Um, and I, I've got a little bit right here. So I've got these nice fish tweezers, but you can use- uh, That was beautiful. Let's see that again. Yeah. I've got Get in real close, Gio. Nice, there beautiful. There you go. Yeah. So. The key is no, and this one, there were just a few that were in there. Very um, cool. Yeah, so the key is to take off as little meat as possible. Uh, you want that to, to be in there. And now I'm gonna remove the skin on this. Um, it's, you know, the way we're roasting this, the skin is not going to be um, a, you know, it's not gonna be crispy, so. You could do the skin on uh, as well. You could also saw, um, you know, cook it on a uh, stove top, which is totally and okay. And while you're skinning, you to... while you're skinning that chef, I'm just going to let people know that eating the skin is obviously something that I would recommend. Not only is it delicious, but it's full of nutrients. Um, yeah. Getting it crispy in the oven by leaving it in on you know heat overnight is a good way to do it. Uh, deep yeah. frying them, uh, topping them with glazes. Those are all great ways to handle skin. Uh, when you go yeah. to a Japanese restaurant and order uh, salmon skin sushi, that's that's what they've done. There we go. The, that looks beautiful. There you go. Look, so, very little waste left on yeah. the skin. Yep. Just enough to make um, salmon crunchies. Exactly. So a uh, little tip, if you have anything left on the skin, use uh, a spoon and I'll get up here so Joe can get a little closer. So use uh, the back of a spoon and you can take off the rest of that meat in there and it comes off pretty easily. Dice that up, throw it in a, you know, put it in a ponzu sauce, but you're getting everything off of there and that's got some of that Good fat, healthy fat in there. Uh, and then just dice yeah, so it that up. Works for, that works for a lot of different fish, tuna included. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Any fish that you're working on, if you're going through the trouble of uh, skinning and deboning yourself, make sure you save all that meat. That meat's expensive and it's delicious. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, I just stepped off to wash my hands. That's all right. All right, so I've got my salmon. We're going to roast it. Parchment paper is indispensable in every professional kitchen. We, would, we wouldn't be able to cook a thing without a big pile of parchment paper. The great thing for you guys at home is if you buy one box, it'll last 20 years. Yeah. Not, not joking. Uh, first thing you should do is cut, them in, cut most of them in half so that they're yeah. the same size as a half sheet pan. And because uh, at home, no one has room for a full sheet pan. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you just, uh, again, don't want to waste anything. All right, so I've got my salmon. I've got a little bit of olive oil. How does the salmon arrive in the kit? Uh, so the salmon in the kit is, um, it's already prepackaged, uh, skin off, pin boned. Uh, oh, okay. so, so we, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Super uh, you easy, won't have to ready do to any, go. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, you won't have to do any of these steps at home. Um, and it's ready to go in the oven. Uh, for a stress-free holiday meal. All right. Want to make sure you season it well on both sides, obviously. Yeah. 
you can't can't under season food usually. There's almost yeah. there's almost no way to under season things. Most people under season. You definitely want to uh, err on the side of a little too much versus too. Oh much. yeah. All right, just rub that. All right. Nice Notice salmon. it's just enough olive oil to coat the salmon. Not it's not swimming yeah. in olive oil. It's not a confit yeah. of salmon. Yeah. All right. Here All we right. go into another. Yep. That'll go into the oven. All right. So what I'm pulling out um, is that last recipe we're working on, and it is the butternut squash. And Joe and I are gonna go on the move to the other side of the kitchen. All right. So the kit comes with wild rice mashed yes. cauliflower, roasted uh, uh, roasted squash and Brussels sprouts. Also butternut squash uh, as well. Looks like a diced sort of hash look. Yeah, yeah. So what I've got over here, I've got my wild rice that's already been cooking. I am, and this is just a mix of wild rice and brown rice. Uh, there's so many different kinds of mixes of, of wild rice that are available and out there and if you just find wild rice and have some brown rice at home you can cook that just add the brown rice a little bit after you and chef the wild um, rice wild is rice. a simple open the package boil and serve huh? yes yes um but in the salmon kit uh we've already got the wild rice mixed in with all of these vegetables oh all terrific the all right. squash the, well, that's a lot of work um, already done for you yeah, all you have to do is uh, reheat it a little bit and add it, you know, put it in the oven in your baking dish. Right, so. Uh, so Jeff, I hate, to, uh, I hate to, to pepper you with questions, but there's a lot, a lot yeah. of questions about seafood. Oh yeah, Sometimes absolutely. when I buy a fish from a grocery store like Whole Foods, I notice the fish tastes okay, but the skin tastes fishy. What's that indicative of? Is the fish not really fresh? Should I eat both the fish and the skin if it tastes fishy? I'll let you handle that. And I'm sure you're all over it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, there the reason some certain types of fish are fishy um, is because of the bloodline. Um, and the bloodline is, is really prominent in certain, certain fish. Oh, that bowl was hot. Uh, I'm going to move it over here. And then to this, we're going to end that butternut squash. Um, so um, bluefish, for example, I'm from Virginia. Bluefish is very prominent in Virginia. Bluefish also has a very prominent bloodline. Uh, and if it's not bled correctly um, out when it's caught, uh, it tends to have a fishier taste. Um, some people like that. It's an oceanic taste, uh, how we call it. We don't shy away from those types of fish. Uh, tuna, uh, yellowfin tuna also has a very prominent bloodline that should be cut out before you eat it. Uh, but, you know, tuna at the grocery store, that dark red, almost maroon color uh, is that bloodline. So if you see that in a fish and you're kind of afraid to, uh, or it seems too oceanic, you can easily trim that off and cook up your fish at home. Yeah, I think the, the, the short answer is that the bloodline deteriorates faster than the flesh. So that yeah. part is gonna that part is gonna get fishy first. And if yeah. there's a lot of it is still attached, uh, you're gonna want to either trim it out or not worry too much unless it's really gone bad. Yeah. All right. So it looks like you have wild rice, butternut squash, a lot of delicious stuff just went into and that dried bowl. cranberries. So oh, this beautiful. is very wow. festive. You know, and cranberries add that sweet texture. There's so much texture in this dish, um, and I really love it. And so much flavor with the uh, sautéed veggies, which are um, onion, celery, um, carrot, garlic, and sage, and then some uh, cremini mushrooms. Amazing, amazing. Wow. Yep. You're covering uh, the entire market here from the first I to the am, last yeah. I am. All right, so one... Last thing, I've got the, any more questions? Lots of questions. Uh, when Lots. I bake salmon, chef, when I bake salmon, there is this white stuff that comes out. How do you avoid this? Ah, don't overbake it. Uh, <laughs> don't overcook it. 
that's a that is a telltale uh, of overcooking. It's the proteins that are being released, and it's in all fish. It's just because salmon is that beautiful pink color. Uh, it's that much more noticeable. So when you're overcooking or cooking certain, you know, any type of fish, that protein is going to release and come out of the sides, and it's that white protein. So just just be careful. Uh, and you also might want to reduce your heat in the oven. Don't you know? It tends to when you're roasting at a 400 degree oven and trying to go very quick, um, and those proteins won't, you know, will come out. So just and guys, it doesn't know, mean fish is bad. It doesn't mean that yeah. you shouldn't eat it. It's just a little overcooked, and some yeah. of that protein is, you know, in between the layers of flesh has sort of yeah. pushed pushed out by by the process of cooking. So still good yeah. to eat. Yeah, very still very good to eat. Um, all right, so I've got my cauliflower here. Uh, I've got all a right. little immersion blender. I've strained out the uh, the water that this was cooking in. But as you can see um, from this earlier, I've got some of the leaves, the stems on there. Uh, those are going to blend up, and it's going to look somewhat like mashed potato. This is a little bit healthier, so that's always so. The immersion thing. blender is something we rely on in the professional kitchen a lot. It's uh, sort of an inverted blender. If you have a blender, you can do this in a blender, but this tool is yeah. indispensable. Uh, and that, I like a little bit of chunk in mine. But so, so what else was in there, see. Chef? There was the cauliflower and, and what else? Yeah, uh, cauliflower, I just seasoned uh, my water a little bit uh, with salt. Um, you can also, you know, if you if you want to add certain flavors, what's really good and what comes in our kit is a um, garlic cauliflower mash. So I've added Yum. garlic cloves to um, to boil in with the cauliflower, which adds another layer of flavor, which is awesome. So that's all a right. Great tip. We are going to move back over, Chef. While you're walking to the other side of the kitchen. Uh, Aixa Cruz wants to know, when you put the vegetable in the oven, what did you pour or season the vegetables with? I believe that was sumac and some other things, right? Yes, it was sumac. Um, yes, it was sumac uh, and then salt and pepper. Got it. And Chef, yeah. uh, another attendee wants to know what the ideal temperature to cook salmon in a convection or conventional oven is. Uh, in a convection oven, uh, three uh, or conventional oven, 350. Uh, in a convection, you're going to get a faster cook time uh, because of that fan uh, in there. But just, you know, it's going to be a little bit quicker. But 350 is a good roasting temperature for salmon. I always say the lowest temperature you can tolerate because yeah. the lower you cook, the lower and slower you cook it, the more tender and juicy it's going to come out. But yeah. For some people, it's just intolerable to wait that long or look yeah. at the look at the fish appearing not to cook at all for that long. But uh, you know, f fish is fully cooked at around 140 degrees, so uh, you could you could go as low as that, and we do that often when we cook sous vide. So um, the lowest you can tolerate, but definitely no, not much more than 350 or 400, right, Chef? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sharon wants to thank us for being. Uh, Two wonderful chefs full of info, learning so much. Uh -huh. I credit you Thank for you, Sharon. most of that. <laughs> no. All right, what's the next step, buddy? Uh, so we are just waiting on that salmon to cook. Um, and we're going to start plating all of this beautiful meal. Uh, before we do that, I want to, uh, one way that I like to garnish uh, the vegetables uh, is by adding a little pomegranate seeds. It adds a, an extra you know, crunch. It's very festive. Uh, so uh, pomegranate seed or, or pomegranate. Um, I'll show you an easy way to cut this to get those seeds out. And I am gonna throw on a glove just in case any juice gets all over the place. So I, I do a little bit of a roll. It's pretty loose. All right. so. You first want to just cut at the tip a little bit, just enough to see all of the seeds where they are. There's that core. 
Um, and then you can kind of see where the pomegranate is it broken up into sections. You can trim a little bit more off of that just to see. All right, so you've got these sections here and we're just gonna cut about a quarter inch thick all the way down to the core okay. and follow. Down. That one looks like it's over here. That one. While the chef is taking care of our pomegranate, I want to remind you to please help support Holy Apostles Soup yes. Kitchen, a food security charity chosen by Seymour. Is obviously very important to Chef Rob. Uh, the link is in the chat box. Uh, they do good work. Food security is uh, at the very top of uh, important issues facing our nation right now. As you guys may have heard, you know, one in six people facing food security issues, that's roughly 60 million Americans. And I can tell you yeah. from my work with the, the food, food security charities in New York, it's about 1 million children in the local area. So, yeah. And Holy Apostles is doing a really, you know, they have, have been there since day one of the start of this pandemic. And uh, when we were shutting, you know, when this all happened and, and, you know, we decided to close our restaurants, I had so much food in all of our walk-ins um, uh, across six restaurants. And um, I and uh, Jay Wainwright, the CEO and owner of the company, decided that, a, uh, you know, instead of letting that food go to waste, we would donate that food to Holy Apostles Soup Kitchen. Um, so, you know, super commendable, know. super commendable. Jay Rain Wainwright it writes in and says, Rob is so good on camera. So natural. Has he ever thought of becoming a TV personality? <laughs> I just thought I'd, I'd embarrass you with that. Chef, we have about eight minutes left. We have about eight minutes awesome. left. What do you think we need to do All to put right. the dish together? So we are going to put these together and I'm going to clean up a little bit. Um, so we've got all of this. I need one more bowl here. I've got my salmon. It is, you know, the magic of coming out on camera. I've got this. I'll clear up this a little bit. Like this. So that salmon, you know, just keep an eye on it as you're roasting. Salmon got, looks beautiful, still juicy. Yeah, we've got those roasted veggies. And I'm just gonna take some of these pomegranate seeds. By the way, that was a great trick, it didn't escape me. Nice nice job on getting those uh, seeds out. Thank you. Without without they, creating a bloody mess all over the yeah, cutting board. Yeah, seriously. All right, so we're just adding a little bit of those pomegranate seeds onto these roasted veggies. And like I said, I love some fresh herbs. These are cut chives. And I'll add that. Can't have enough right. fresh herbs in the professional kitchen. Yeah. All right, so there's that cauliflower mash. Beautiful, also, look at that. I love, looks like mashed potatoes, doesn't it? So much help. It does, there. it does. <laughs> And there's that. Um, we're gonna go back to that fresh dill that we set aside. I can't believe earlier. all of this comes in a kit for four people for yeah. literally almost nothing, 150 whatever dollars. There's nothing for what you're seeing here. Yeah. All right, so we're adding some of that fresh dill. If Beautiful you dill. Fresh there was a question about slices. dill stems, yeah. chef. I think, I think we probably both agree that stems are are just as delicious as the leaves. Dill yeah, stems. absolutely, absolutely, and that's not true for you know all all the uh, herbs. All herbs. Uh, cilantro is, is another one of those where you can eat the entire entire thing. Um, and then we've got this, but we're missing a bowl. The just imagine rice. this. Just imagine this in a big, beautiful casserole it, dish. It, it is um, in a big, then, beautiful bowl. <laughs> I know it is. Uh, and then uh, our kits also come with uh, these 
buttermilk biscuits. Stop and, it! Come on, no, they yeah, don't. they they <laughs> they get a uh, they get a nice honey glaze, honey butter glaze on them before they. I'm gonna um, order this they go out. immediately. This is the deal of the century. Yeah, it and looks and absolutely have it. beautiful, guys. It looks so beautiful. Sorry, I think I said Seagrams instead of Seymours at one point. Apologies to all oh, really? involved for that error. <laughs> I don't remember saying it, but but apparently I did. Sharon Rizzo says you could buy. Uh, Sumac from Atlantic Tea Company on Cape Cod. Thank you for that tip, oh, Sharon. Nice. David Wong awesome. uh, wants us to know that if you soak the fish for 20 minutes, it takes away the fishy odor. Leave you to think about that, Chef. Uh, okay. <laughs> and uh, and are there other Seymour's items available for the holiday ordering pickup for next week? Kellyanne, I think yes. you're making fun of me, making fun of me a little bit, but uh, what other Seymour's items are there? Yeah, so uh, you know, I've I've started branching out a little bit. I'm cooking more than just seafood. Um, I've got your classic turkey um, holiday kit, which is uh, we sold at Thanksgiving time, and we're also selling um, pre-selling for the week of Christmas. In addition, uh, I've got this really beautiful uh, three-pound Fermani smoked cured uh, uncured ham. Uh, that I've got with green bean casserole, uh, mac and cheese. It's all of these comfort foods, uh, as well as the buttermilk biscuits. Um, and it's all for four people. So that's those are the two other ones for the holidays. Um, and so you've got, you've us, got a turkey kit, a fresh ham yep. kit, and the salmon kit all around the same price for four people? Yes, yeah. Guys, I can't, ex I can't express enough how good a deal this is. This is um, a, a steal if, if I... I'm just going to say it. Sorry, chef. I know, you're, <laughs> I know you're thinking food costs, but this is a steal. All, all of the work that you just saw him do is all done for you. All you have to do is buy one of these kits, take it out, finish the, you know, cut a few herbs, heat up a few things and you're done. What a great, yeah. think about all the stress that you eliminate from that, hol that holiday table. Look at that beautiful yeah, food. Absolutely. Uh, Ada Eggleston, uh, I imagine it is related to you. At Etta. That is my mother. Hi, you, Mom. You did such a good job. <laughs> of course he did. He's terrific. Hi, He's Mom. Terrific. I miss you. Sorry and I can't it's... be there for Christmas this year, Mom. <laughs> oh, no. Don't say it. <laughs> and Exa says, uh, congratulations, Rob. Exa Cruz, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Uh, congratulations. It looks absolutely delicious. Um, someone wants, uh, someone's uh, insisting we answer the salt question. Chef used a type of salt they want to know if it was kosher salt, sea salt, yes. uh, smaller grain, larger grain, Himalayan. What, what do you yes, prefer? Yes, Tell yes. us everything you know. I love kosher salt. So you can um, get that. I've got a big box at home. Um, it's so much better than iodized salt. You, um, so, and then if for a garnish, I would use, you know, a Maldon sea salt that you can crush up, uh, but that's a finishing salt. So yes, kosher salt all the way. It's funny, I was just telling my colleagues at the Downtown Alliance that Mal Dunn now has these tiny little uh, pocket-sized containers. Think about these for a stocking stuff. Yeah, Chef, I you know. should throw these they in your are. kits. They're very cute. <laughs> yes, I, I think I've seen those and they've come in, they, they have a smoked and, and all different kinds of flavors. Thank you, Exa. Uh, I'm glad I pronounced your name properly. Thank you for being such a vocal participant. How is fish sent? Frozen with dry ice or how? Tell us, Chef. Ah, so um, you can use dry ice, you can use gel packs. We use gel packs in an insulated cool uh, container um, bag that is packed very tightly and then uh, so packed fresh. in a the, shipping the cardboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got yes. it. Yeah. You, I expect nothing else from you, Chef. Uh, every time I bake salmon with the skin on, it gets stuck. Even when I grease the pan, any tips on making the skin not stick? This is from Lindsay it, John. Um, that, that parchment paper is a very good trick. So um, that I wouldn't use foil, foil would stick, um, but using a piece of parchment paper, um, that always helps. And if it does stick, just leave it in the oven overnight on the warm yeah. setting. Yeah. And the next day you'll have skin crispies. That'll be delicious. <laughs> Uh, yeah. David wants to know where to buy the mini salts. Do you do you actually know, Chef? I don't know. I, <laughs> it was on a plane. I I, I, I haven't. Yeah, I saw myself. them. 
I saw them coming up on my uh, Instagram feed through Baldor Foods. So if oh, you're cool. in the, the New York area, they they deliver those. They deliver nationwide now, Baldor. Baldor ah, delivers nationwide, really? yeah. So yes, Seymour's that's is another located way you can at, get Seymour's. Yes, Seymour's is located at 250 Bessie Street in yes. a beautiful location in Lower Manhattan. Uh, you can follow Seymour's on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Seymour's. And don't forget to... Uh, to join our contest, cook this dish yes. at home, post the photos, tag everyone that you're supposed to tag, including me and Chef Rob. And uh, one of you in the winner of the poster plate competition will get a live cooking class with Chef Rob himself. And as you can see, he's terrific and really knows this stuff. And we'll be able to answer every question you ever had about seafood uh, ever. So that, that'll, be, that'll be really fun. Um, the next... Demo is Crown Shy on January 28th and Nobu on Feb 11th. So uh, the starlet has been thrown around starting with Rob and it continues with Crown Shy, Chef James Kent and Nobu uh, on January 28th and February 11th. I'll be there with you guys, not mispronouncing the restaurant's name, I promise. And uh, thank you, Rob, so much. And Jay Wainwright, thank you for pointing out that he's a natural because he absolutely is. Uh, and thank you for what you do for sustainability. Thank you to the Downtown Alliance for what they do to make our lives better. Don't forget, go out and play in the snow. It, I, in the last 10 years, it's only snowed twice. So go out and play in yeah. the snow. It's super fun. Rob, I hope to see you soon in the restaurant. I'll be yeah. banging on the door, even though I know you guys are uh, close <laughs> for indoor, in, indoor dining. I'll pretend I'm a delivery man or something. Uh, yeah, thanks yeah. to everyone at Downtown Alliance, especially Ron Dizon. And uh, Craig and Shelly, you guys know who you are. And, and to those of you who watch and ask questions and participate, we really appreciate it. And obviously couldn't do this without you. Uh, all my best, uh, have a great holiday, a happy new year, and see you on the other side. Love you guys.